You guys, you guys notice anything a little different? I'm in a different location. We are, we are here to talk about a bike that uh, was very sought after whenever it first came out, but has been extremely difficult to get. We have finally procured about three of them. I think there's only an extra large left. The, the bike in question is none other than the 2022 Giant Trance X2. All right, all right, so I can't just like not say that I finally got moved. After a year and a half of waiting and filming videos in my mother-in-law's spare bedroom, uh, I, I finally have a room of my own, man. Uh, well, I got a house of, of my own, but we still don't have internet, so I have to take these up to the shop and bum that internet to upload. But anyway, uh, thank you all for sticking with me through those through the spare bedroom times, as I'll call them. So let's get to the bike shop and let's just see what the transex Trans, trans, trans X, trans X has to offer. Straight out of Giant's mouth, chunky rock gardens, roots, and technical climbs, this hard charging trail bike adapts to the terrain, giving you confidence and control on all types of single track. You know they're trying to sell it, right? Basically, this is an entry level to the Maestro suspension at $2,700, which isn't a bad price. It is a 29er, comes stock with 2.5 wheels. Let's just go 2.5 wheels, uh, 2.5 tires. Let's go straight into the specs of this thing and then I'll go into uh, kind of what I think about it, pulling it right out of the box. So again, I always have to put this preface because this is not a full blown review. I will not own this bike. I just have the uh, ability and luxury of actually being able to put my hands on one and showing you guys the actual color of the bike and giving you my firsthand knowledge from being in the bike industry for so long, what I think about the bike, but it is not a six month in depth review kind of thing. Uh, we'll, we'll see how I think about price point, weight, I'll put the weight in here, that kind of stuff. But this is by no means some extensive review. And again, I really don't think you can review a bike unless you've ridden the thing for probably a month. That's where you really get to know its intricacies. So the frame is aluminum, obviously, front and rear triangle, but it does have a carbon upper rocker, which is pretty nice. It's 135 millimeters of Maestro suspension with a flip chip. The fork is a RockShox 35 gold RL 150 millimeter 44 offset. And the RockShox 35 Gold isn't a terrible fork. It's, it is an air fork, obviously. The 35 stanchions really help stiffen the bike up, especially at this travel. It's a decent fork for the price point. It's appropriate for the price point, I should say. The rear shock is a little bit nicer. It's a Fox Float DPS Performance, custom tuned again for Giant. The handlebar, all of that jazz is just giant contact. That's pretty standard. It's just OEM stuff. It does come with a dropper. Uh, I should rephrase that. It better come with a dropper and it does with a giant contact switch. I mean, it, there's nothing to say great about the giant dropper post. There's nothing to say negative. They're just generic. They're average. They're like everybody else's dropper post that uses a cartridge style. Basically, there's a cartridge in there that looks very similar to the little hydraulic pistons like on the back of a hatchback if you've ever had to replace those. All it is is a little, like when you push your thumb lever in, there's a little plunger that'll poke the uh, little nipple at the end of one of those things and whenever it hits that, that's what allows it to operate. Whenever that little nipple is poked back out, the hydraulic piston will stay in place. So whenever your dropper starts to feel like junk or it won't stay up or something like that, you can just take that cartridge out and as long as they're available, which has been a problem recently, you can put a new one in and bada boom, bada bang, you're good to go. You got a brand new dropper, right? But there's nothing fancy about it. Like I personally like the Divine products. The, uh, I ride the Divine SL from, dude, why am I having a brain fart? Oh, it's a Divine SL is the seat post. Why can't I think about the brand? I mean, my brain literally just pooped itself. Bike yoke. I didn't, look, I did not have to Google it. I did not get to the full Googling port. I thought of it beforehand. It is bike yoke. I think they make about the best. They also are extremely serviceable, very lightweight. That's why I went with one of them. You know, the, the SRAM SX stuff, the rear derailleurs are terrible. They were doing a running change with the SRAM SX 
rear derailleurs and they were doing, they cost like $5 more, but it came with an aluminum cage on it and had more metal parts on it versus the completely plastic SX group. That one did seem to be holding up better, but if this bike's coming with the standard rear derailleur from, S, from SRAM SX that's more plasticky, I would say go ahead and pre-order or pick up a rear derailleur because if you actually ride this bike, you're gonna bend this thing. You can bend it just by shifting improperly. The all plastic SX rear derailleurs are pretty crummy and I hate when they put them on bikes, but to upgrade it, that is one of the cheapest things you can do on the bike. So I can't complain too much. The crank is, it's nothing bad. It's just the same as Praxis in my opinion, the OEM stuff and the shifter works. It's, it's got a lot of plastic parts in it, but it doesn't, it's not terrible. I'll say that. So this bike actually comes with a set of four piston Tektro brakes, not the Dior's that are on the spec sheet. I'm kind of indifferent between the two. They both work great. Tektro's use mineral oil. The only reason I would prefer the Dior's over the Tektro's is just the brand recognition if you were going to resell, but honestly, I don't think a set of Dior brakes versus Tektro is gonna hinder you from selling a bike like this if you wanted to in the future. The rims are nothing special, but they do get the job done. They are giant all mountain 29 rims. The one thing I will say about giant rims, uh, wheels in general, giant makes all the components and parts for DT Swiss. So their hubs are usually pretty dang good. You know, there's that old saying, you gotta pick two out of the three. You got lightweight, you got durable, and you got price. Uh, you, you can't have all three. So you, you gotta pick two out of three. Giant goes with durable. And I thank them for that. Too many times I've seen companies companies go with low price and lightweight and those wheels come back in two months and you know the hub is blown out or the rim is cracked or I've even seen where the spokes pull through the rim stuff like that I can't stand especially if you're spending over two grand on a dang bicycle I like the durable factor. If you don't know what a flip chip is, it lets you fine tune how you want the bike to, I guess handle would be the correct terminology, but you can choose the low position, which gives it a 65 and a half degree head tube angle and a 77.2 C tube angle with a 40 millimeter bottom bracket drop. And then you can put it in the high setting, which gives it a 66.2 head tube angle and a 77.9 C tube angle and 30 millimeters of bottom bracket drop. The easiest way to think about it people get really caught up in the number game that kind of stuff you put it in the high setting for your uh twisty tight post and park style trails and you would put it in the low setting if you want it to be more stable at high speeds going downhill for a long time something like going up to canuga all right let's jump to the weight i'm ready you ready i'm ready What would it say? 22 pounds. That's more like I thought. 34.3. Yeah, that's much closer to what's reality. Now granted, I wish I could have weighed one of these smaller bikes, but such is life. This is the extra large, so it's rather big, and I don't think the weight is out of place for a bike that's like $2,700, and it's a trail bike, and it's got this much travel. It's, that's, that weight is pretty common. Everything on this bike is about being durable, not lightweight. When you start spending, I would probably say the next tier up from this is where stuff starts to get lighter and lighter. This has always been one of the best price points of a bicycle. That like 25 to three grand, that's kind of where people first pick up their like expensive bicycle. Once you get over that two grand, you can get a full suspension bike that uh, has all the modern amenities. You, you guys know I'm apprehensive to really give a rating on something like this because it's 2,700 bucks. Pre-pandemic, this probably would have been, I would probably guess like 24 to 25. So they've increased the price that much and Giant's always been one of the better ones. But if I had to say something negative about the bike, it would probably have to be that RockShox 35 Gold. It is a decent fork, but for a trail bike, I think suspension is the number one thing. Over wheels, over everything, your suspension is 
is, is where it's at. So I would probably save my money up and buy a nicer front fork on there. You can you can get something good for under $1,000, but that RockShox 35 gets the job done, especially if you're staying locally, like around the Charlotte area. Now, if you start going up to Wilson, something like that, I want something that's a little bit more tunable. That's, that's getting nitpicky. That's me trying to find something for $2,700, man. You can't find, in my opinion, a better entry to the high-end trail bikes, if that's a category that I can come up with. Cause you can get a lot more bike for your money at like $1,500 if you're looking at a hardtail, but, or if you went with something like the Stance, you can get a full suspension bike for 15 to two grand. My biggest gripe though is with a Stance that it's still quick release in the rear, like giant. Don't be putting out a bike that's around two grand, full suspension that's quick release. Like this is 2022. That's, that's my biggest gripe. They, uh, the Fathom's not even quick release anymore. So that's that would be for a completely different story uh, or day or whatever. I'm tired from moving, but these bikes are flying out the door and I had a quick second where I could at least bring one of these to you guys. Um, I'll, I'll give you a tour once we get settled in. All right, thank you all for the support. Make sure you like and make sure you subscribe and see you guys in the next one. Love you, bye-bye.